Welcome to the Supernova Transformation Channel, where I speak about self-awareness, emotional regulation, and our basic human experience, so you might as well smash the like and subscribe button. Third one are your cognitive distortions and your cognitive biases. And the reason why these are important, I'm going to go over cognitive distortions first because cognitive biases are different. Cognitive distortions are important. So according to psychcentral.com, it talks about how a cognitive thought or a distorted thought is an exaggerated pattern of thought that is not based on facts. It leads you to view things more negatively than they really are. And the reason why I say this is important is because, like I said, it's not based off of facts. So a very common cognitive distortion, which a lot of people use, all men and all women, this is a generalization. So when you hear a man say, oh, all women are whores, or when you hear a woman said, all, say, all men are trash, a generalization based off of past events and past relationships that have only hurt them. And they are taking it out on the rest of the population who to which they have never met. There isn't one person in this world who has met all 4 billion women on this planet. I highly doubt that. So going back to reality, that is a generalization based off of what? People who actually go through shit, who go through childhood traumas, who actually go through exp and experience generational traumas, and who experience a lot of pain from their past. It's going to be based off of this. Like I said, traumatic events that have happened to you. Now cognitive distortions, because you're not going to construct these cognitive distortions out of nowhere. You've experienced a certain demographic of people in a negative way, whether it's minor or big. All these cognitive distortions come from that. It comes from how you felt in the past in certain experiences that made you believe this certain pattern of behavior into thinking this because of how you felt in the past. It's an exaggerated pattern of thinking. An exaggeration can only be created from what? It can only be created from emotion. It can only be created by our perception of something, because we overthink, we start adding shit into it. It's like an autocomplete. The mind will always try and find shortcuts, because our conscious mind, when you look at it, our conscious mind cannot comprehend the full vastness of this fucking universe and what goes on around us. That's why the subconscious mind picks up on shit around us. Our conscious minds, not even just our conscious minds, our subconscious minds, try and find shortcuts when we experience something, especially if we're not mindful of how we feel. If we feel good about something even, but you weren't mindful of it, of just being like, okay, why does this sound too good to be true? Or cognitive distortions. We exaggerate or we assume. You can even assume good about someone too and be wrong he has a clean background or he went to an ivy league school or something but then guess what maybe he runs over a few people when he was drunk you're assuming the best in someone to prove you wrong right maybe he had a leading alcohol problem did they know about that or did they think about that and so with these negative cognitive distortions that one that leads me now so according to verywellmind.com, a cognitive bias is a systematic error in thinking that occurs when people are processing and interpreting information in the world around them and affects the decisions and judgments that they make. When it comes to cognitive biases, there's a huge list. I'll leave the link for it in the bottom. Cognitive biases is something such as confirmation bias. This is basically in favoring information that confirms your beliefs and discredits and ignores information that doesn't conform to your beliefs. Here's a perfect example. Left and right wing, liberal and conservative. This basically leads, even that, so when you can, when you are in a polarized way of thinking, this is where confirmation bias can put you in that state of just ignoring what everybody else says because they're the enemy, because they're on the other side. How many times have you heard that? When it's just, oh, blah, 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 fake news, blah, 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 for everything. Hearing people just talk shit about the other side as if everything that they say is wrong. Everything that they say is wrong, which is not entirely true. There's always check and balances. There's always a little bit from each side. Let's be realistic here. Here's another one that many people have. It's called the halo effect. Your overall impression of a person dictates how you feel and how you think about them. Think of it when you find somebody attractive. What happens? The halo effect. You look at them as an angel. But let's face it. People have their experiences. People have their shit. They have their demons. And this is where, again, the halo effect it really ignores a part of reality that we that we forget about. And this could be even minimalizing. This could be considered minimalizing as a cognitive distortion. So it's all kind of correlated. It's just all these things and just looking at it and like, okay, well, I'm being a little biased here based off information or things like that. And so like I said, this is all this all links together. These two things are very important for us to really under look at and understand for our feelings and what and how we can regulate our emotions just a little bit better. Why I say these are important and what I notice about them is because it got me to understand 
my way of thinking negatively, which was usually a response to my triggers. I noticed that when I started thinking of you ever notice when you actually experience something very emotional and the ones where you get absorbed by it, you're identifying with it. And then you start thinking about shit. If something happens, you start filling in the blanks with inaccurate information because you're trying to process it. You're trying to make sense of it and you're trying to protect yourself from it. If it is, a, we'll say a situation that evokes fear, your mind will try and make sense of it. And that's what I noticed for me, especially I was one to personalize everything. And if you look at my previous videos, I talk about my struggle with personalization and why I would catastrophize. I would assume and I would fall into emotional reasoning, believing my feelings are facts. And these are just some of the ones that I can just think of right now. And mind read as well too, because I wasn't able to fully express how I felt either too in a healthy way. Like I wasn't given space as a child to express how I felt. I was just told to deal with it and shut up or I was beaten for it, which then just I bottled it up and would just come out in very unhealthy ways. When I started to learn about my cognitive distortions, it was easier for me to notice them and it took years. You have to understand where these come from as well too. You have to audit it as well and just sit with it, especially when it happens. Okay, I'm catastrophizing. Why? Is this based off of fact or feelings? Is this how somebody else would experience this same situation? Am I just out of my fucking mind right now because of how this emotional charge, because of this trip? Trigger. Most of the time we are. It's because of the emotional charge of the trigger. We're just losing our fucking minds because of us trying to process it from that inner child. That inner child is still trying to process that trigger, that it's, that situation. We're still trying to make sense of it many years later it's because that inner child that we neglected grows up into an adult body but has not unlearned or processed that traumatic or painful situation in a healthy way because we were told to shut up and not say anything or not do anything thing or got beaten because of it. There's a systematic link back to your childhood as to why you have such negative thought patterns, why and how you're trying to process and understand the situation that is happening to you, that is triggering you. We're all going to have these cognitive distortions. It's, every single person has it. Let's take generalization. It's easy for us to generalize and overgeneralize. This is a common one too. Oh, I always do this. This never happens. When you say always or never, these are examples of generalization because you're, you're basically basically saying every single time happens and it's like, okay, no, you're just pinpointing the negative times and highlighting them by saying it had, this happens to me all the time because of how you feel in that moment. Generalizing, just saying like, oh, okay, well, they're all the same. And you see, we have these tendencies. I'm sure we have many times when we assume, when we assume something to be true, but then realize after we get more actual solid information or data about a situation, we're just all of a sudden like, oh, my assumption was wrong, which nine out of 10 times it usually is. It's very easy to do that. I still sometimes do it. I don't do it as badly anymore though. I can say that. I can admit that. I've noticed some, a lot of healthy growth from a lot of the main cognitive distortions that I suffer from. Because it's like, no, I'm just assuming here, Alex, because of how you feel right now. Remember that. You don't have all the information. And I'm like, okay, take a step back and just notice it. Don't be absorbed by it. Just say, I am feeling fearful right now, which is causing me to assume. And something like that, a healthy, mindful take and observation of what is going on in your internal world, as opposed to reacting to it and being absorbed by it, whether it's in the body or whether it's in the mind, we're going to have sensations. And then guess what? Our thoughts start getting into it. It starts creating a fucking mess in your head, right? I'm sure you have experienced that. I sure as hell have.